Okay, today we are checking out the Primarch's Angron Law, the Red Angel, and his legion is the World Eaters. Now, uh, a lot of people have requested this. I think this is the last video that we're going to check out from Italian Spartacus on the Primarchs. I think we've actually watched every other single one. So yeah, it's time to learn about Angron. We've actually done zero on him, as far as I can remember. Uh, the, he's been mentioned here and there. He was mentioned in The Biggest Assholes in Warhammer, if you haven't seen my reaction to that. From Major Kill, go check it out. Uh, that's probably most of the information I've got from him. I know he was one of the last Primarchs to be found and was probably the most estranged from the Emperor. I think that's correct, if I remember right. And obviously he was descended into chaos in the end and he was on Horus's side. Also his legion being called World Eaters. Well, I mean, we can only predict what that means, right? His his legion eats worlds, you know? He seems like a bit of a, an asshole, you know what I mean? Apparently he goes on murderous rages. So yeah, you don't want to be fighting Angron. After the Q&A, you know, after I said I would, of all the Primarchs, if I could kick one in the nuts, it would be Horus. A few people said in the comments it would be Angron, and I kind of thought that would be the case. Uh, Horus, Angron, maybe Conrad Kurz would get a few, but I think those are the two. Maybe Perturabo as well, but I think I think Angron and Horus take the take the pillar, uh, the the thing for that. Let me know which one you would, and if you haven't seen the Q and A, go and watch that as well. Of course, uh, you can go just, just watch it. Pretty fun. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into this video. I am gonna split it into two parts, as all long law videos from Warhammer and even SCP maybe will be split into two parts. This video is 37 minutes, so I'm assuming I'm going to do a 20 and a 20 because obviously I'm going to talk. So the first part will be, we'll watch it until we get to about the 18, 20 minute mark and then we'll continue the rest tomorrow. It will be out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, man, be sure to request any videos you'd like to see and subscribe. And yeah, let's get into this video. The World Eaters are one of the most brutal and violent of the Emperor's legions. During the Great Crusade, their battle lust and subjugation of entire worlds via slaughter has brought them and their Primarch to heal many a time. Today, we're going to talk about our next Primarch in our beloved Primarch series, Angren, the Eight Red Angel and the master of the Seventh Legion, the World Eaters. Now, this one holds like a, a pretty special place in my heart as the World Eaters, or well, the Corn Berserkers, for that matter, made up the bulk of my Chaos Army, which was the second army I collected after the Space Wolves. So I was correct. I remember a long time ago I said, you know, when I want to do a lot less, I was trying to remember which Primarch went to which Chaos God. And I remember Volgrim, Slaanesh, Nurgle and Mortarion, Zinch and Magnus. And then I was confused on who, I was confused on who Korn's uh, Chaos prince was right and i was like is it angron and i guessed right i guess i mean it couldn't have really been anyone else could it when i started 40k back in the fourth edition now the world eaters are the king of daddy issues even more <laughs> so than the other legions or i guess respective primarchs which are the primarchs of daddy daddy issues I, i'll leave that joke out of it but we'll talk about angron's brutal brutal uh, early life the subsequent ripple that has on his life as well as his fall during the Horus Heresy and what happens to him during and after the war. So join me on a bloody adventure through the bloody anals of Angron's bloody path. Anals? Really dude? Just have a dirty mind, my bad. I forgot Angron's the guy with the weird fucking USB slots in his head. Did I uh, just say bloody anal? Yes you did. Okay, moving on. Our story begins on the distant planet of Nuceria, deep within the... Can someone explain to me why he's got, uh, like, a TV, he's got all the connections into his head, bro? It's a bit mad. I'm not sure what that is. I, I can... I, I recall hearing something about it, but I don't know why it is like that. Ultima Segmentum. Now, as we've talked about, most Primarchs were far-flung to these death worlds with tribal, rural, or feudal populaces. Now, the case with Angron is a little bit different. Nuceria housed a flourishing, technologically advanced civilization that was ruled over by an entire upper caste. Think kind of like a techno Rome, not the whole like techno music part. Now little is known of Angron's early life as he's not the uh, most talkative of sorts when it comes <laughs> to uh, chumming up by the fire and sharing little stories, you know? Little nothings of his past. And most prime, most Primarchs don't like talking, do they? I mean, I can imagine one Lionel Johnson 
was not much for talking. He'd just sit there and he'd rather not go to the gathering, right? <laughs> Rogel Dawn, he would take everything too serious and just probably would just be confused. And then, you know, you have Lehman Russ who doesn't seem too much for that type of stuff either. I think most of them aren't very talkative, to be fair. Discovered by a slaver, surrounded by a, a dozen or dozens of dead aliens. And, and those aliens were actually suspected to be Eldar and the, the, I guess the kind of like mythos of the, or the, the, the uh, theory behind it is that those Eldar were actually dispatched to the planet knowing what Angwin would become to try to uh, dispatch him or, or destroy him early. Star Wars. And the boy was, was badly wounded from this but obviously quite victorious and this clearly presented itself as a worthwhile gladiator for the slaver and the boy mm. was sold into slavery. You see Deshea, the primary city-state of Nusiria, was ruled over by a pretty heavy-handed oligarchy. To control the extremely impoverished society, there were, there were uh, daily gladiatorial games in which droves of slaves fought to the death. So, Angron is the gladiator. If you haven't seen that film, Mr. Maximus Decimus Meridius. You know, I had to watch that film for homework once. That's besides the point. So, yeah, he kind of does look like a gladiator now that I... Look at him, he's got like the gold armor and uh, he's they've got these. He kind of does look like it's based on the Roman, the Romans. Obviously, you have Lehman Russ, who's more the Norse. I mean, I'm not gonna go through you guys know who everyone's kind of based on, right? Like I said, Neo Rome, Angren was sold to the most powerful ruling clan, Valkyr. He was also granted a name, Angren Valkyr. <laughs> there, he was brought to the palace Proxica which was kind of a seat of, or like the throne of power for Deshea and, and, it under, and he underwent the surgery to get what's called the butcher's nails grafted into his head. Oh. The nails are going to be coming up a lot in this video, but they're, they're grafted deep into the subject's brain, you know, kind of against the cerebral cortex and the relics from the dark age of technology. We've talked a lot of this about, about this before, how there's all these relics that, that the grander Imperium doesn't know about but they do a lot of uh, crazy things that, that, again, no one can even replicate. STCs. But the nails, they replace the pleasure centers of the user's brain. They're oh. under a uh, certain amount of physical pain and duress, the, the user that is, but when they get into combat, the nails release endorphins at a rapid amount as the adrenal gland fires. So it kind of works in conjunction with your lust for battle. And the more battle you get into, the more adrenaline is pumping through your system, the more, I guess you could say pleasure, but the way that the books kind of describe it is more it lessens the pain and just reduces them to a state of normalcy, less so than like this like ecstatic, pleasured kind of uh, uh, state that they would be in, almost like a like a Slaneshi worshiper. It's not like that. They're not sitting there rubbing their nipples as they're chain axing people. It's a little bit, sorry, it's a little bit different. I do that. How can you do that when you're? I mean, you'd have to have multiple arms. That would kind of be embarrassing too if you died to that. You know what I mean? Some guy's just just going at it, and then he's just got another arm, and he just axe you to the to the face you know i bet many imperial dot guards have died that way but you can already tell four minutes in that angron was already just set up to be corn's guy like the guy's a gladiator he feels no pleasure he he's got the need the usbs in his head to kill people already man he's already trained to be a gladiator and just kill for fun so it's already a perfect match whereas some of the other ones i mean more is a pretty good match even though he didn't want to be nurgles Nurgle sprints with with him growing up on that gas poison planet. Magnus again was also a good match because of the psychic powers and Fulgrim. I mean, we have not done anything on Fulgrim, so I don't know how good a match he was, but um, but it also completely bleaches out emotion and reason from the uh, from the equation. So you essentially have the pinnacle in merciless killers without having to indoctrinate them or train them. So it's a really kind of uh, amazing brainwashing capability. And as you would expect, a Primarch hook. Primark hooked up to this would be extremely powerful, and Angren quickly rose in fame and prestige as he slaughtered his way to the top of the ladder. I and bet any did. gladiator that stepped in front of him died or, or, or was spared. And if he particularly, he being Angren, liked the way they fought, he trained them personally and, and kind of spawned mm -hmm. this whole generation of vicious, highly trained gladiators. Angren actually enjoyed the thrill of combat and the roar of the crowd, but this didn't mean he wasn't trying to escape at every turn, because even as much as he enjoyed the kill, he hated the submissive lifestyle of being a slave. I mean, what psychopathic killer who is even more amped up thanks to neurological surgery would want to be enslaved? Or, well, I guess anyone for that matter. 
to that end. I wouldn't want to fight Angron. How can you fight well against the Primarch? Unless you're a beast yourself. Like, I don't see the way you could. The guy is way faster and stronger and bigger than you. And why does one of his eyes look like it's smaller than the other? The Lord of the Red Sands, as he's called, decided he needed more than just himself to escape and started to band together with the gladiators he had trained. During a uh, brand like new set of games, Ingram made his, his, his kind of big move. The Shea had planned an event where in all of the gladiators would have just kind of this gigantic melee in the arena involving every gladiator in the city. Now, you can imagine the kind of respect and authority that Anguin commanded, not only as a champion, but to some of these gladiators as mentors. So when the time was right, every single gladiator turned on the armed guards for a grand escape. So it wasn't at all what, it was, what was planned, obviously. And the Deshaean guards were armed with guns, so this was definitely a kind of like a last samurai sword to a gunfight type scenario, but 2,000 gladiators include- To me, it just sounds like the end of the gladiator film. It sounds like the entire plot. I mean, obviously, Angron didn't have a family, and his wife and his kid weren't murdered by the prince. But, uh, you know, he was captured, and then he was a gladiator. He was by far the best. He killed everyone. He, he befriended the other guys and even helped them out, which Maximus did in Gladiator. And, and then he escaped, and they, they basically suffered them, sacrificed themselves, getting arrowed, bow and arrowed, and all kinds. In The Last Samurai... That film was just fucked up. I don't know why they went run running at guys with guns, but... Including Angren, made it out of the city and into the mountains where he was first found many years ago. There, he became, you know, Warhammer 40,000 Spartacus. He launched multiple raids and, and defeated many armies. And, and pretty much any army that came against him uh, that was trying to subjugate the slave army. And Angren named the army, his slave army, the Eater of Cities. Aemon was able to finally bring his martial skill and leadership as a Primarch to the fore as they won victory after victory. But there were they were kind of fighting this, this, this overarching war of attrition as more and more men kind of died with each and every engagement, resulting in half of the original 2,000 left standing. So, you know, 1,000. But it's worth noting here that Quick they held out for, for many years before finally meeting it's this grand confrontation on the mountain of uh, Fedan Moor in the Deshaean-like -like, De -like ridge. Now, they're surrounded by five Nusarian armies. Angren's future was kind of cut out for him, you know? Like, metaphorically speaking. The, the, there's not a pun here, like, you know, I, I can, never mind. And this was around the same time that the Emperor discovered his wayward son, you know, kind of watching the past couple months, observing his actions before finally meeting his son on the eve before the battle. He offered leadership of the Warhound. The Emperor sure has a lot of fucking time on his hands, doesn't he? Like, what's he doing? Guy's got a crusade to run, and this guy's watching his pri his sons from, from the distance for two months, just like, oh, nice, nice. Just go get him, bro. What are you doing? Probably not even him, it's probably someone else watching, isn't it? Like... It's a legion that was made in his image. Now, what I'm about to say is pretty huge. All Angren right. refused the Emperor mm -mm. outright, saying that his place was amongst his people and that he kind of deserted them, it would be a stain upon his honor. Now, now this is huge. Angren is the first Primarch to refuse the Emperor. I'm sure, really you know, Vulcan and Russ had their little challenges, you know, did not even knowing that it's the Emperor, but every Primarch either knew who the Emperor was immediately Magnus. or had to be shown through some sort of trial and, and didn't know who that, that, that guy was. Didn't know He didn't come to him and say, hey, I'm the Emperor of Man. He would come <laughs> usually in, in disguise. Man Emperor of Man. Angren straight cock blocks Empipu, you know, just sulks him back to the to his flagship because he approaches him as the Emperor, the emperor of Man of the Imperium, says, hey, you need to come with me now. You're the master of this legion. He just goes, no, I refuse. The Emperor knew Angren was going to die. And he brings his ship into low orbit and teleports Angren off the planet. Now, most Primarchs kind of have that one moment where they go, oh, yeah, I, I don't like the Emperor too much. You know, I, I, my, my allegiance is wavering. For Angren, this is different. You know, he immediately holds a grudge. and He considers this a huge stain upon his, arm, on his honor. But the results on Nusiria are brutal. All of his people, demoralized without their leader, obviously, were slaughtered to a man. And Angren was inconsolable, really. Not not in the way that he was on his bed, like, crying, kicking his feet while tossing and turning and punching his pillow, like, Billy's never gonna love me. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Who the fuck's Billy? Instead, he'd slaughter anyone that got close to him. Uh -huh. The Warhounds, the, the name of the legion before Angren's arrival, was led by a man named Ibram Greer. A very well-decorated and respectable general amongst and all And he ties it off. And he, uh, went missing, quote-unquote, suddenly. 
you know, out of the blue, a handful of weeks after Angren's arrival. And it was this way for over quite a few of the uh, high-ranking officers of the Legion. They're just getting killed left and right by Angren. Oh, they disappear. They're dead. Now, and it wasn't until Captain Karn went to confront Angren that he finally saw the character of his Legion. Karn was, was just beaten to a pulp, near death, but still persisted in winning over his liege lord. This perseverance kind of reminded him of the gladiators of Neusteria, the same kind of perseverance that kept them in the fight and kept them kind of coming back to Angren for more and more punishment, even though they, know that they knew they were going to die at his hands. So this was kind of Angren's acceptance of the Warhounds. He renamed the uh, Seventh Legion the World Eaters to honor his fallen comrades. Now, there's usually a sort of acclimation period for every Primarch where they kind of shadow maybe Horus or, or spend a considerable amount of time with the Emperor like Vulcan did, for example. Not with Angren. He was just given the keys to the kingdom and told to lock up when he was done, which is hmm. kind of wild because this guy is certifiable. Angren's response was to completely reforge his legion in his in his true image. And he took to retraining everyone in the same kind of methods that he trained his gladiatorial comrades on Usaria. And this is really it. The, the only family he ever knew was on Usaria, and he is sort of stuck in reverie. This is where his mind is almost the entirety of any book that talks about Angren. Even though Angren is always attributed as this, an emotionless killer, he's actually one of the more tragic Primarchs in the lore. There, there's no gleaming banners that unfurl over his victorious moments. He just moves from world to world, choking the galaxy in blood. And there's a reason he's called the Red Angel and the Lord of the Red Sands. You know, he, he spills so much blood and he, so much barbary in the, in, in the meantime. Makes the sand red. In Naruto, Sasori is the Lord of the Red Sand. I wonder if there's any Lords of the Gold Sand in Warhammer. Like, what's Gara? Just Lord of Sand. I don't know. It's not important because uh, they're not in Warhammer, are they? And this brings up another segue I want to go into a bit more. The Butcher's Nails. Now... We talked a little bit about these implants, but the implants that are embedded deep within Angren's cerebral cortex. And we talked about them briefly, but upon returning to the Imperium, we find that the implants are actually degrading Angren's cerebral cortex. Sure, it replaces the impulse to give uh, serotonin on anything other than adrenaline and combat. Yeah, that is what it is. But it was not meant for the intricacies of a Primarch's brain, and it's slowly killing the Primarch. This, of course, doesn't really matter to Angren. And Master of Mankind, we really get a good light on how Angren knowingly is killing himself by throwing himself into more conflict as it speeds up the process. And additionally, he prescribes his entire legion be fitted with the implants. And this takes years as the, the apothecaries and tech marines of the legion kind of try to replicate the implants, which at first proves to be extremely fatal. Eventually, though, they evolve to degrade the mind even less but all new recruits have them implant have the implants slapped on regardless the existing legionnaires had to volunteer for this implant and most did now this is something i want to kind of drill down on one of the best books we get on the world eaters and their inner workings for that matter are two pieces one by aaron dembski bowden butcher's nails which is an audiobook and then betrayer which is a continuation of the first heretic book it's a kind of like a two-part series of all the books in the Horus Heresy series, they're the two best ones, I think, that that really, as a whole, uh, I'm talking about uh, Betrayer and um, First Heretic, I think they're the two best ones, and the most, like, the best, like, standalone, and gives you the best background on, on everything, really. But there's a point where Argyll Tall, the first of the Gaul Vorbach of the World Word Bearers, asks Karn, who is the equerry of the World Eaters now, why he went through with the Butcher's Nails. Now, you... It's important to know something. The butcher's nails. Butchers don't actually have nails, so it doesn't really make sense. I mean, in terms of killing butcher, but butchers can't meat. So it doesn't make sense, butcher's nails. Like, unless I'm missing something. I'm not a professional butcher, but, you know. If you don't know who Argyll Tall is, Argyll Tall is now, he's the very one of the very first iterations of possessed Chaos Space Marines. We've talked about the Gaul Vorbach in some of our previous videos, but... He, this is a demon going, hey man, why would you, why would you, or a demon possessed dude going, why would you let yourself get the butcher's nails put in your head? When this is a guy who has a demon like nestled in his chest, basically. I mean, we're talking about implants that completely change the individual as soon as they're in battle. But the books talk about how Karn is 
mild-mannered, intelligent, and actually very clever. But as soon as the nails get a hold, he's kind of just lost the bloodlust. They talk about him kind of being lost in a haze, kind of looking around aimlessly as he just slaughters the next foe. But Karn talks about how their father, Angren, was so distant from them and how it was the only thing that they, or he kind of says, if, if it's the only thing you know could bring you closer to your gene father, wouldn't you do it, even if it no. meant pain and death? And the nails... Mind killing the poor ultramarines, man. Come on, ultramarines, you got this. ...for the World Eaters aren't a way to fight better, although that's what they become. They're a way to truly relate to Angren and, and kind of get closer to him. And Argol Tal kind of has that moment of like, oh, yeah, I guess I did the same thing by having this demon possess me because this is what my father wanted. So it's, a, it's, it's definitely a really cool moment where you see the motivations behind base legionnaires, why they go to do these atrocities, and why they go to do what they do is because they, they're all doing this for the veneration or the acceptance of their father who is ultimately corrupt. It's a very cool kind of like self-reflection moment in the books that you don't get too often outside of like, you know, brother, brother, forearm clasping. Now, as we kind of get back on point, the forearm clasping. I mean, I can't do it to myself, but like... <laughs> Um, the nails probably just made it even worse to, for corn, easier for corn. Now none of them even have any sort of intelligence or not, it's not brain power, but they don't know what the hell they're doing. They just like killing. So essentially they are just servants of corn already and Angron, they just, they can just serve him. They just like his army already. He just has to convince Angron or take him over wherever the hell he does. Why is there a little face in there? The legionnaires that failed to make the transition fully with the nails became these kind of unhinged berserkers, forming up what the legion called the assault companies and named the Kadere, which Lucy strip translates from Latin to slaughter. And uh, actually, one of the, uh, Karn is is a captain of one of these assault companies, so he himself is kind of one of these unhinged berserkers. As soon as the nails kind of bite fold on him, by bite fold I mean get a hold of him. So, with the Butcher's Nails in place, Angren made his way into the Great Crusade to unleash his World Eater. The results were pretty poignant. A whole-scale slaughter of entire systems kind of resulted in almost immediate compliance by the scant remnants of survivors, you know, like the 15 he would leave alive. So great was the World Eater's fury that systems would comply and fall under compliance for fear of having their populace knocked out entirely. Other Imperial officials and, and detachments began to fear the 8th Legion, or I'm sorry, 7th Legion. Even Bobby G hadn't seen such a no-holds-barred bloodbath since WWE Raw aired on television many millennia ago. And during... WWE Raw has no bloodbath. It's all fake. Like, I, I know everyone knows WWE is fake, but... What do you mean bloodbath? There ain't no blood. They have, like, the ketchup back in, they slap it on the head. <laughs> the cleaning of Arigata, not regatta that's a cheese um angren no. earned his nickname the red angel ricotta ricotta is a cheese not regatta i mean maybe regatta is also a cheese i'm not an expert on cheese but because of his legion's extreme barbary and, and you know lack of prejudice in utterly destroying the foe you know creating these little ramparts no, i'm sorry ramps of corpses over the ramparts over the fortifications of the enemy <laughs> This that just made me think of something. He said he kills everyone equally, right? I remember my friend, well, like way back, one of my friends was like, I'm not racist. I hate everyone equally. <laughs> I think that applies to Angron. He did say something afterwards, which was definitely racist, but we're not going to talk about that. I mean, I guess that's how you become the least racist. You just dislike everyone equally. I guess that's easiest. I don't know. Angron is probably not a great role model, you know? Who would be able to kill Angron? Like Fulgrim. If they were on different sides. I don't know. Horace probably. And Lehman Ross. I don't know. Quite the rift between him and his brothers. I mean, for one, he didn't like the title of Red Angel because it smacked of too much similarity to Sanguinius, who Angren absolutely abhorred as a mutant. Hmm. And there's one hmm. particular Primarch hmm. that Angren has a, has a lasting feud with. Shit, I feel like... The majority of Primarchs have a lasting feud with this guy, Russ? but Lehman Russ and Angren oh. are especially not pals. During what Lehman Russ isn't pals with anyone. I've said this a hundred times. The guy does not like anyone. Same with Lionel Johnson. Like, do they even like care? They just do what they want. Right. And this guy says Sanguinis is a mutant. Mutant. Look at your head. Wait, what? What? Look at your head. Fucking donut. What is called the Night of the Wolf? The two had a pretty fateful encounter. 
Angren had gone particularly overboard during what is called the Scouring of Gehenna, a planet brought under Imperial compliance with its entire population slaughtered to a man and a woman and a child, completely killed, devoid of life. And this caused an extreme backlash from the Emperor, who dispatched Lehman Russ to of bring course. Angren to town yeah. to account for his transgressions. Punishment was simple. Cease implantation of the Butcher's Nails into the Legion and return to Terra for as much of the nails to be removed from the Legion as possible. So, so Lehman Russ knows that, you know, I'm going to go bring Angron, but he couldn't do that to Magnus, even even if Horus wants to, dis, you know, mess around with the orders. Amen. Angron complied with his brother's request and followed him to Terra. There, he became a reformed librarian of the Imperium, known far and wide for his retelling of a tale of two cities. Sarcasm. Which is just a total fucking lie. Sorry. Both Primarchs were backed by their respective legions. Now, this, this wasn't the first time Russ was dispatched to deal with a wayward Primarch. <laughs> and certainly Guy's not the last, for a kill as streak. we'll discuss in Russ's video. But Angren began insulting Russ and the Emperor, oh, no. calling the latter oh, no. a slave driver and the former his lapdog. Oh. And eventually, it resulted Dog. in conflict. Brother fighting brother as the two legions engaged in the Primarchs' duel. And this is one of the very first pre-heresy fights between Primarchs that didn't and end up in one of them being completely like wiped out of imperial history. There's <laughs> the two Primarchs that we don't know about that is suspected to have been killed by Russ, sanctioned by Russ. We don't know a whole lot about it. And this is Primarch one of the very few times that they come, that two Primarchs come to blows outside Amen. of, of course, you know, Russ and Lionel Johnson. And so I feel like Lehman Russ is, is the root of all problems, but not really. I love that guy. But anyway, during the duel, Angren smashes apart Kraken Maw. This is Russ's uh, ice sword. And Russ destroyed Angren's Widowmaker, his first chain axe. Uh, his second being Gore Child. Angren eventually kind of. Widowmaker, Gore Child. <laughs> the first one's better, better named. But rest in peace to the axe and the sword. I mean, Lehman Russ is going for fucking kill streak, bro. This man's already got two down. He wants more. I mean, Magnus was probably going to be number four because he would have come after this. But Lehman Russ, bro, this guy must love fighting Primark. Kind of gains the upper hand and defeats his brother in combat. But this was all part of Russ's plan. As he tried to bring Angren to reason, you know, through words, as I that's totally going to work. The Space Wolves were able to completely surround Angren, needing only the uh, kind of command from Russ to kill the Primarch. So Lehman Russ stayed the order, and, and both parties left the planet with their pride wounded. And Angren <laughs> actually considered this a win for the world leaders, as they inflicted <laughs> more casualties, and neither would concede defeat. It's, it's really a bit of a black stain on both of the Legion's history, yeah, because they both kind of say, like, oh, yeah, well, I got him in this way, and the other says, oh, I got him in this way. And it just is one of those definite situations where... Yeah, you both really lost out in, in, in the long run of this one. I mean, to me, it sounds like Lehman Ross won, considering he went and done his job. My man let him win, and then his legion just surrounded him and said, go on, we'll just, we'll just erase you from existence right here. That's going to be the end of part one. <laughs> 19 minutes, 30 seconds in. Uh, this video is already 30 minutes long. Don't know how that happened. I was talking too much, but yeah, man. Thank you all for watching this. Uh, nice intro to to Angron and we'll continue on tomorrow with part two so if you haven't subscribed be sure to subscribe all that good stuff and yeah i'll see you all tomorrow